this video lecture, we're going to talk about 10 key words that are really important to know when you're working with loops. So these are the 10 words right here that we're going to go over. Here's an example right here, and we're going to just use this example to discuss each one. The first one is the loop control variable. So what is a loop control variable? It's the variable in the loop that controls how many times the loop is going to execute. So here is our loop right here, the loop header. And I've got my condition right here. And that's important to know first. You see one of our words is condition. So let's go ahead and label this condition. I'm going to use yellow. My condition is a Boolean expression that's going to evaluate to true or false. And it's going to compare two things. So I'm comparing the value of x to 0. You always have to have two things. You can't compare one thing you have to compare two things. So I've got my expression here, I'm comparing two things, and it's gonna either be true or false. That's a Boolean expression. So we've got our condition. A loop needs to have a condition. Now in this condition, one of the two things that you're comparing should be a variable. This variable is my loop control variable. So its value determines how many times this loop is gonna execute. So let's go ahead and label this one. My loop control variable make it green. It has to be part of the condition and it determines how many times the loop executes. Now we don't know in advance. That's all right. Now the sentinel is what am I going to enter in order to stop the loop? So I'm going to not look here at the condition, but I'm going to look at the prompt. So my prompt says enter a number negative one to quit. So in this case, negative one is my sentinel. The number I'm going to enter in order to quit the loop. So my sentinel is not part of the condition, it's part of the prompt. Now I've already established my control variable as x. So what is the initial value of this control variable? That should always happen outside the loop. So I'm going to look before the loop starts, my control variable is x, here is x, its initial value is 0. Now we already know what increment and decrement are. So increment means to increase by some number, decrement means to decrease by some number. So I'm gonna look inside the loop, this is where that should all be happening, and right here I'm increasing by two. Now you're used to increasing by one. Is increasing by two okay? Sure, any number, as long as this is a constant number and here is a variable. So I'm increasing this variable by two every time. So that's an example of increment. It's kind of dark there. So we've got anchor. Okay, so decrement is the, just like increment, only it's decreasing. So I've got a negative here instead of a positive. So here I'm increasing, here I'm decreasing. So I've got my decrement. a dark color as well. Okay, so just review real quick. Could you find the condition? Always something that compares two things, evaluates to true or false. The loop control variable is the variable in the condition. The initial value of the control variable has to be set outside. And we've got increment, we've got decrement, and our sentinel is part of the prompt. Okay, let's, what about initialize? That's the first value of any variable. So I've got a couple over here. So this one is initialized as well. And this one. Let's go ahead and highlight this one. And this one. Okay, so any variable that's getting an initial value outside the loop is initialized. And you have to initialize something before it can be incremented or accumulated. So that's a common error. If I try to accumulate total, and I don't have total here, notice I don't have total, so I would get an error. In order to fix that, I need to have total equals zero. Now I've got another initialize, and I will avoid an error. Okay, so got accumulate, and that means I'm going to take a value, and I'm going to add a variable to it. 
So notice the difference here. Increment, this is a constant. Or accumulate, this is another variable. And this is the variable I'm asking for. Okay. So if I'm going to keep adding some different variable to my total, that's accumulate. So let's label this one. Now, priming read and modification we don't have necessarily in this example. That's going to also use um, a prompt, but we don't really have a priming or modification read in this example, so we're going to skip those two. Let's take a good look at your eight words that we went over. If you have any questions about these, then write them in your notes and you can talk to me about it in class. Let's take a look at another example. We've got our 10 words up here. We're going to go through this example, and once again, we're going to label them and just discuss everything, make sure that it's all crystal clear. So first, let's look for our condition. Condition is part of the loop. So here is our loop header. We know it's a header because it's got a colon right there. And the condition is going to be comparing two things. So here I've got number greater than zero. Two things being compared that will evaluate to true or false. Here is my condition. Now in this condition, when I have a variable, this is going to be my loop control variable. It's what's going to change and determine how many times the loop executes. So here is my loop control variable. Now the loop control variable should have some kind of initial value. This is happening right here, but we're not going to label it as an initial value because I'm not assigning it a specific number. I'm doing something else. We're going to come back to this in a minute. Let's look at initialize. Do I have some variables out front that I'm initializing? I've got my count and total. And it's really important that you initialize these first because here I'm going to accumulate, here I'm going to increment. They have to have an initial value in order to change. So right here, I have initialize. Okay, do I have an increment? How about right here? Let's change the color. Do I have a decrement? You can see I only have these two statements and neither one is decrement. But I do have accumulate. So accumulate is usually going to be a total or a sum. If you're using good descriptive names, it should be easy to know that's what you're doing there. You're accumulating a total, accumulating a sum. So we've gone through these eight. I've got my loop control variable. Okay, what about my sentinel? Okay, so I'm going to look in my prompt. I'm not going to look anywhere else. Just look in my prompt. That's going to tell me what my sentinel, sentinel is. What do I input in order to stop the loop? In this time, it's going to be zero. I don't have an initial value. I do have increment. I don't have decrement. I have initialize, accumulate condition. So now let's take a look at priming read and modification read. If you did the textbook reading yesterday, and you've seen these words before, that was in the reading. So if you prime something, that means you get it ready. So if I want to get my control variable ready, I have to prime it first. And that's going to happen outside the loop. So this statement right here is getting an initial value for number. And it is an input statement. So this is a priming read. Let's go ahead and label this. Let's make it this teal color. So a priming read happens above the loop. It has the control loop, the control loop control variable. I'm going to go ahead and make that that bright green. Loop control variable, and it assigns it an initial value by asking the user. So this is my priming read. Now, once number has a va value, I need to change it inside my loop. If I don't, I'm going to have an infinite loop. So the last statement needs to ask for a new value for number, and that's my modification read. So I'm going to go ahead and make it black. This is my modification. Okay, so priming read is my loop control variable above the loop. Modification read is my loop control variable, the last line of the loop where I change it again. So this gives me a chance to exit the loop. I'm going to put my sentinel in here. I've got everything labeled. Take a good look. Now for the last part of your notes, I want you to actually practice labeling the parts just like I did. So you can see here on your homework page, 
hopefully you've already put down all these words and you've got them on your document and you've given some definitions. I would like you to use your own words. If you're having any difficulties, you can go back to the video lecture or you can use our website. So if you look here on chapter four, all the words are right here. We've got sentinel, loop control variable, initialize, increment, decrement, accumulate, primary, modification rate, and condition. So use these as your guide if you need to. Get your notes filled in. Now, you're gonna take this example right here, you're gonna copy it, put it into your notes, you can put it inside the loop or you can just put it here outside the loop and you're gonna label all the parts. No laziness here, you actually have to go through and do it. So first of all, look for your control variable. Control variable right here, X, and you can just label it in some way. Maybe you come all the way up here. Or if I did put this in my, let's get this, if I do put this in my loop here, you can come here to where the X is. And X is control, loop control. And then where's your condition? It's right here. So you can say something like x greater than zero is condition. So I want you to actually label everything. You can't just draw lines or highlight. You actually have to spell it out. So here, if this is initialize, you say initialize. Okay. So that's gonna be the end of your notes is to take this example and label all the parts. And if you have any questions, make sure you note them, and we'll talk about them in class. All right, that's our video lecture for today.